Dr. Robtel Nijia Pale, Assistant Professor in International Social and Public Policy at the School of London in the UK, delivered a lecture on a book she wrote called Developmental Citizenship and Its Discontent in Africa to students at the University of the Gambia on Wednesday. Dr. Pale develops a new model for conceptualizing citizenship within the context of crisis affected states. Priyama Cham tells us more of that in this report. Drawing on rich oral histories from over 200 in-depth interviews in West Africa, Europe and North America, Robtel Niaji Pele examines the socio-economic change in Liberia, Africa's first black republic through the prism of citizenship. The book called Developmental Dual Citizenship and Its Discontent in Africa is a post-colonial critique of the neo-Liberia framing of diasporas and donors as the pancreas to post-war reconstruction. The book purely focuses on Liberia's transformation from a country of immigration to one of immigration, thus influencing claims for and against dual citizenship. Dr. Rob Talniaji Paley says that the book is a case study on Liberia, which was the first black African republic and the first country in the continent to divest legal norms, citizenship, membership, and belongings. What I discovered in my research after interviewing over 200 Liberians in five countries, five cities, three continents, is that when it comes to the issue of dual citizenship, domestic as well as diasporic actors really view dual citizenship quite differently. So domestic actors might view dual citizenship as a zero-sum game, as infringing upon their already very limited access to political, economic, and social rights, as perhaps reproducing inequalities and exacerbating inequalities, and as perhaps maybe privileging an already privileged or seemingly privileged class of people. However, Diasporic actors, diasporic Liberians, diasporic Gambians might view dual citizenship as enabling them to be stronger political, economic, and social contributors to development because they do send remittances, they do engage in the political process, they do build capacities of their nationals in the country as well as in their countries of settlement. Drawbacks of being a dual citizen include the potential for double taxation, the long and expensive processes for obtaining dual citizenship, and the fact that you become bound by the laws of two nations. Dr. Paley also elaborates on the advantages and challenges of dual citizenship in the African continent. You can look on both sides of the dual citizenship debate um, in talking about... I believe fundamentally that... In the case of Liberia, and I'm going to speak about Liberia because that's where I conducted the vast majority of my research, in the case of Liberia, that dual citizenship is inevitable, that we will enact, legislate dual citizenship in Liberia for a number of reasons. So Liberia happens to be the only country in the West African subregion that has no form of dual citizenship legislation. And it's largely a result of our history, it's largely a result of our migratory patterns, it's largely a result of our post-war um, recovery process, it's largely a result of our armed conflict, but e e eventually Liberia will institute dual citizenship. Few African countries provide for an explicit right to a nationality. Laws and practices govern citizenship leave hundreds of thousands of people in Africa without a country to which they belong. Her book develops a new model for conceptualizing citizenship within the context of crisis-affected states while offering a compelling critique of the neoliberal framing of diasporas and donors as the panacea to post-war reconstruction. Reporting for iAfrican News, I am Maria Macham.